What's up, everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next question. And before getting into it, just want to mention that this question here is written out in the lecture notes. You can find it at the beginning of the section on the website. If you're on YouTube watching this, you can go to the description box and there will be a URL that will lead you to the website. So given the company's information below, so over here, notice we're given the stock price, the number of shares outstanding, the book value of equity, the total debt, and then the cash. So given all that information, we have to find these things right here. We have to find the market capitalization, the market to book ratio, debt to equity ratio, the market end book, and then the enterprise value. So starting with the market capitalization, I'm just going to erase this here. I'll put the whole calculation. That's what? That's the market value of the equity. So notice we're given the book value of the equity. We're not given the market value of the equity, the market cap. So we have to calculate that. And the way we can do that is we would take the total number of shares outstanding, 8.3 million, and multiply it by what? The market share price or the stock price, which is given as 32. So that would give us the market value of the equity, right? What it's trading at per share in the market times the number of shares outstanding. And when we do that calculation, we would end up getting 265.6 million dollars. So that would be the answer to number one. That's what the market cap is gonna be. And we're actually gonna be using this quite a lot in the next couple of things we're gonna calculate. So notice the market to book ratio. That's basically the market value of the equity divided by the market or the book value of the equity. So we're gonna take 265.6 million and divide it by um, 90 million. And when you do that, the millions would cancel out. 265.6 divided by 90, that would give you 2.95. All right, so that's what the market to book ratio is gonna be. Now notice here for C, we're asked for the debt to equity ratio, but we're asked for the market and book. So that means the debt to market value of equity ratio, and then the debt to the book value of equity ratio. So there's two calculations for C. So starting with the, I'll erase this here to give myself some room. So starting with the book debt to equity ratio, we would take the total debt, 180 million, and divide it by the, um, the book value of equity, which would be 90 million. And that's going to give us two, a nice round number. And then getting the market debt to equity ratio, we would take that same debt of 180 million, but now we're gonna divide it by the market value of equity, which we found up there, 265.6 million dollars. And so when you divide those, you'd end up with 0.68 if you round to two decimal places. So those are the two answers for C. And then D is asking for the enterprise value. And the enterprise value is basically the um, right side of the balance sheet, the market value of the right side of the balance sheet minus any cash. So the market value of the equity, 265.6 million. And then on top of that, we're going to add the, uh, the debt that's on the right side of the balance sheet. Now with the debt, we're not told whether this is book value or market value. Since we're only given one figure, we can assume that it's the market value. So all of those, but then we subtract the cash. Basically the enterprise value is what is the market value of the assets excluding cash. So if we add the market value, the right side of the balance sheet, 
That's going to give us the market value of the assets on the left side of the balance sheet. And then we subtract cash. It's almost like this cash is not really doing nothing. So it's like we're pretending that we're going to pay off this debt with this 95 million cash. And so what would the rest of the assets be worth? And when you end up doing this calculation here, you'd end up getting 350.6 million dollars. So that there represents your enterprise value for this company. All right, so the biggest step was probably finding that market cap because notice we used it um, pretty much everywhere except for this portion here. But once you get that, then finding the ratios, finding the enterprise value is not too bad.